ओके आई थिंक वी आर लाइव ओके आई कैन सी ऑलरेडी सी कमेंट्स हाय प्रणित हाय लाइन कैट डेव स्टूडियो हाउ आर यू गाइस डूइंग लाइक थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग we'll wait for some time for more people to join in till then let's know like how did you find the last session where you there where we just went through the basics of dart then we made our first flutter app we'll wait till 7:3 and then we can get started with our session today oh yes so someone is attending today for the first time it's totally fine like you'll be able to catch it up should be simple enough yeah you can always check the first session uh, whenever you want on our youtube channel gds cvit is al always available there there are a lot of other videos also uh, so feel free to check it out okay i hope we can start with our session today welcome everyone to the second session of flutter festivals by gds cvit i am jeevan yohan burgess uh, i am the facilitator for flutter festivals this year so this is our second session in the series and in the last session we just gave an intro to dart then we started building our first our flutter application where we saw uh, some basic info about stateless widgets stateful widgets then we made a small app to display an image uh, to add a stateful widget then we saw how to nav simply navigate to a next screen that's what we did in the previous uh, session if you were not there you can always watch the recording yeah okay there are a lot more people in the chats good to see you guys yeah i will share my screen now let me know in the chats whether it is visible okay i am sharing my screen right now uh, when it is visible let me know in the chats so that okay i hope my screen is visible yeah my slides are visible i guess yes okay so once again welcome to the second session of flutter festivals today we will be exploring ui in flutter and we'll give a quick recap of what we did in the first session so if you are attended the first session uh, you might already know this what are flutter festivals so i'm telling this for the people who are new here flutter festivals is a series of events led by google developer communities like uh, gdscs and here we will be featuring google technologies like flutter firebase and google cloud 
in the first session, what we saw is intro to Dart. Then we saw some basics about widgets, like what is a widget? Widget is nothing but a text, a button, or a container, or even a column, row, and anything that you see on the screen. That's a widget. Almost everything in Flutter is a widget. That's what we usually hear. Then we saw what is a stateless widget and a stateful widget. So stateless widget is nothing but a static widget where it uh, does not change. Like it is a static thing. Like if you have a static image and a text or something in the screen only, that's a stateless widget. What is a stateful widget? Stateful widget is the one that changes, that is dynamic. So for example, when a user interacts with it or a user clicks on a button, you want to change something on the screen. That's a dynamic screen, right? So it is a stateful widget. That's what we saw about stateless versus stateful widgets. Then we saw an example where we built a app with an image and a button to like, which increases the like count. When you click it on again, then it decreases the count. Then we saw how to use a text field to capture the text from the text field, show a snack bar. That's what we saw. Then we quickly went through something called a widget tree. This is how the hierarchy of widgets are arranged in a Flutter application. Uh, this material app is the root of your application. Then you have your home page. Then you have something called scaffold, which gives a material theme for your application. Then you have app bar, etc. Before we move on to today's session, today we are going to build a UI clone. So before we move on to today's session, I would like to uh, have a quick quiz. So for the quiz, I will share you a link. Uh, quickly went, go to that link. Then you will be able to attend uh, the link uh, attend the quiz. I'll share it in the chat right now. I know there might be a slight delay in uh, the stream and the chat. So go to that link. I have shared a link in the chat. You will be seeing a question there. Then let's see who is going to answer first and uh, who is going to get it right first. Okay, there are some people here. We'll wait for like one minute because there's a slight delay in the stream. It usually happens. So we'll wait for some time and let's see whether uh, more people are going to join in. Okay, so side by side, I'm checking the uh, comments also. So that's why I'm uh, in between, I'm checking my phone. Okay. okay so this is going to be uh, okay so someone just said quiz just led to a hard icon yeah because i haven't started the quiz yet i'm waiting for uh, some more people to join in we'll start the quiz in 10 seconds yes 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 uh, i will start it right now Okay, we are starting the questions right now. This is going to be uh, very easy. Like if you have attended the first session or if you have a very basic idea about Flutter, you can answer this. The quest is going, quest, questions are going to be from uh, the previous session only. So yeah, let's see who's gonna answer, give the correct answer first. Okay, let's start the quest right now. Okay, which widget to use to arrange items in a vertical manner? That's a question. 
Okay, we have already some responses. You have 60 seconds to answer this. We have some responses here. Let's see who got it right. Which widget is used to arrange items in a vertical manner? Items means widgets only, like text, images, anything. OK, so we have 10 responses for column, and it is the right answer. Great job, everyone. Like, really happy that everyone, most of you got it correct. Let's see who is the fastest. Let's see the leaderboard. Okay, let's see. Okay, John Naveen with 974 points came first. Congratulations, John. And congratulations to everyone else. Like, there are only slight differences in the points. Naveen, Kitty Cat, Nith, Nirmit, Ward God. We have a lot of responses. Great job, everyone. We have another question coming up. This is a chance to be on the top of the leaderboard. Let's see. Let's go to the next question. Are you guys ready? Let's, let's see the next question. OK, 13 people are here. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to start the countdown round. Okay. Where should you mention your image assets in a Flutter project, of course? So when you're doing your Flutter project, where should you add your image assets? You have four options, Android manifest.xml, pubspec.yaml, build.gradle, info.plist. Come on, guys, quick. This is your chance to be on the top of the leaderboard. Let's see who's going to win the quiz today. Come on, you have got 40 seconds. Let's see who's going to be on the top of the leaderboard. Yep, 30 more seconds. OK, 20, around 20 seconds. Everyone, quick, quick. Let's see, let's see. I got 10 more seconds. Final three seconds. Three, two, one. Time up. Let's see who, yeah, we have six responses for pubspec.yaml, and that's the right answer. Now let's see who all has given the right answer. Answer. So let's see the leaderboard. Okay, Nith. Nith with 1,931 points is a winner. Congratulations. Congratulations, Nith. So you're the fastest. You gave the answers, right? Great job. Great job, everyone else. Like, there are very slight differences in the points. Kitty Cat, Nirmit, Anushka, Jay, Parwani, John, Naveen, everyone. What God, Santosh, everyone. Great job, everyone. We will have more of this in the upcoming sessions. So great job, everyone. Let's see what are we going to make today. So as we said, we are going to make a, a UI clone. So next up, we have a general question. This is not a quiz or anything. Just comment down, which is the most frequently apt uh, app that you use. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> sorry. So which app do you use most frequently? That's the question. Let's see the responses. If you go back to the quiz screen, you can see uh, the question. OK, we already have some responses here. Spotify, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. 
Yes, yes. Waiting for more responses. Okay, WhatsApp, Instagram. Okay, okay. Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube. Okay, okay. We have Vitti here. If you don't know about Vitti, Vitti is a project from GDSC VIT where you can keep track of your timetable at VIT. We'll wait for like 10 more seconds and we will move on. We have LinkedIn, Netflix, Discord, Google, GPay, Tinder. A lot of apps are here. Okay. We'll finish this in the count of five. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Yeah. So we have WhatsApp, Instagram, I think Instagram is the winner here. Might be a slight margin, but Instagram seems to be the winner here. Great. So what we are going to build today is the UI clone of, of Instagram itself. What we are going to make is the home. We are going to replicate the home page of Instagram. So this is just a UI a prototype. And uh, this does not have any functionality or anything. It's gonna this just uh, similar to a design prototype or something. Why are we doing this? To get familiarized with different kinds of widgets in Flutter that you that we have. So this is what it will look like the final app. So this is not the actual Instagram app. This is the app that we are going to build. Okay. So yeah, we will see what all different widgets are we gonna use in here. So what is the advantage of doing this? As we said, we are gonna explore a lot of widgets today. And we are going to see a different, a lot of attributes of different widgets. And usually what happens in while you are working in a project is there will be a designer. A designer will give you a design prototype. So you will be making the designs in Flutter, right? So you can't use uh, something like Figma or anything. You are going to use uh, Flutter to build the UI. When the designer gives you the UI prototype, you can, if you are familiarized with this process, can quickly make the UI and then later add on the functionality. So that's how it usually works while you're working in projects. We'll quickly see what all things are there inside this uh, UI clone application. So first thing up, we have an app bar. So this is an app bar. We have seen an app bar in the previous session also. And we have some icons here. These are called actions of the app bar. Then we have a row here, which is scrollable in a horizontal fashion. You have story uh, icons here. Then you have a post. So for a post, there will be a small avatar over here, then the user ID. And then if it's verified, then there will be a blue tick over here. Then you have the image or the video posted by the user. Then you have some uh, actions here, call to action buttons like uh, the like button, the comment button, the share, save buttons. Then you have the text like the like count, then you have the ID, then you have the caption that you have written. Then there are a lot of posts like this. You can scroll down. So this is also going to be a scroll view. And yeah, then you have something called a bottom nav bar here. Inside the bottom nav bar, you have different options. When you click on this, it takes you to different screens. First thing is a home screen. Then you have a search. Then you have real screen. Then you have the notifications area. Then you have your uh, profile, then you, your profile page. This is a simple breakdown of the application that we are going to build today. Uh, yeah. So let's quickly get to uh, our IDE. We are going to create a new project. Select whichever folder that you like. And now we are going to start a new project. 
for the new project i'm going to use the same shortcut control shift p then you can search for flutter there should be something called flutter new project click on that and which flutter temp template are we going to use we are going to use the app uh, you are going to make an app so just give application and select a folder where you want to create the project i'm going to give the name as a uh, instagram ui flutter anything you can give any name as you wish just press on enter it will create a project for, for us let's wait while it is getting created yeah it created the app for us and just starting the emulator for now i'm going to run the application in the emulator uh, you can also use a physical device so if you're having a physical device just uh, connect your phone with your laptop and enable usb debugging then you you will be able to run uh, on your physical device also right now i'm going to uh, run on android emulator so let me start the emulator it might take a little time till then you also create the project uh, if you can code along with me that should be uh, really great then you'll also get the flavor of how to uh, do this okay let's try running our app right now we should get the default app uh, that we saw in the last session with a counter icon and everything let's see whether that is going to happen here it should be by default you will get that uh, app here so for the first time it might take a little time so uh, i will wait for you guys also to catch up build uh, make the project try to run on uh, emulator or a physical device that you're using will always be looking at this uh we'll always come back to this slide and see what all things are done and what before that uh, you might need some assets like all these icons and all for that uh, i have made uh, i have uploaded everything to my drive i will send you the drive link in the chat so you can download that Okay, so I have sent uh, the link on the chat, uh, YouTube chat. You can check that. It's a drive link. You can download all the assets from there, like all these uh, icons, uh, these logo and everything, all these call to action buttons and everything. You can download it from there. You can use any image of your choice for this post and all. That's up to you. I just chose some random images okay so the this is a default app that we get whenever you create a new project i'm going to remove all this uh home page and everything we don't need this i'm going to remove all this uh home state and everything we are going to start it as a fresh project remove all this remove this home page and now i'm going to create a new home page let's call it home page only and it's going to extend uh, let's say stateful widget actually you don't need a stateful widget here because we are going to make a static thing because it's a ui just a ui prototype or ui clone when you're actually working a project you you will probably need a stateful widget so uh, for now i'm giving a stateful widget here and i'm creating a state for this called home state Make it stateful widget also because you have scope to make the stateful. Like if you want to implement the click action, you can do that. Make it uh, stateful only. And we are going to create one missing override here. So this is exactly as we did in the last session. Like when you create a stateful widget, it has uh, 
method called create state where you are supposed to return a state. You have to return a state here. So we are going to return home state here. This state is going to be of type home page because this is the state of this home page. I have something called a build widget. So if you don't override this, you will be getting an error. To fix that error, if you haven't done this, like that it, it will be it will show an error. Just click here and press on control plus PD or control plus the greater than symbol. It will give you the quick fixes. So click on create one missing override. It should automatically create the override for you. What are you supposed to do in the build method? In the build method, you have you that's where you define how your screen should look like. Uh, that's where you define all your layouts, like different widgets and everything. You're going to return a scaffold here. We have seen what is a scaffold in the previous session. It just gives a, a material uh, behavior for your application. Like we need an app bar, we need a button navigation bar. So to arrange everything uh, in that fashion, you're, uh, you need a scaffold. So here, instead of my homepage, there is no my homepage here. Instead of my homepage, what I'm going to return is homepage. Let's save this. Inside this scaffold, I'm going to define an app bar. The app bar is nothing but this thing over here. Let's see how this app bar is going to look like first. I'm going to give a title. First, let's give a text Instagram. It's going to be a constant text. Okay. Now let's try running this. Yeah. We have an app bar here, but it uh, does not look like what we expect, right? Uh, it is not the same font, it's not the same color. Also, we have a banner here. So we have already seen how to remove this banner. For that, just scroll up, go to the material app. Here, there is an attribute called show debug, debug show check mode banner. We're going to set this as false. Now, if you try running this again, it should be gone by now. Okay, so the debug banner is gone. We're going to give the title as, let's say, Instagram UI. I'm just giving a random name. You can give anything that you like. Okay. Then I'm going to remove this theme data from here. I'm going to directly set the color of the app bar here. So how do you set the background color of an app bar? For that, there is an attribute called background color for the app bar. And you're going to set it as colors.white. So colors is a built-in class in here. You can access what all colors are available there. White, black, everything. all the standard colors will be available there. If you're going to use a custom hex code, we are going to see that too, how to do that. We'll see that in a few moments. Yeah, I'm going to set the color as white. And instead of this text, what we need is this thing, right? There are two ways to do this. You can download the font of Instagram, uh, Instagram logo, and then uh, apply it to the, a text widget. Otherwise, you can have an image here. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the image of logo there. For that, first, we need to have all the images in our project. As we said, I have already, uh, as I said, I have already shared the uh, link to the drive uh, in the YouTube chat. You can go there and download the assets. I have it already downloaded in my computer. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this in my uh, project. We have to make a new folder. I'm going to make name it images because it's uh, all of these are images. I'm making all the image, making sure that all the images are available. Okay, so all the this icons are here. Then I have some random post. I have some random profile pics over here. Just replaced with my my picture here. 
you can uh, add your picture or what or whatever uh, Instagram user pictures that you need in here and try to build your own. I'm just giving some of my favorite images. That's all. Yeah, now we have an images folder in here. As we said, what we should do is you had the same question in quest. We should add this in pubspec.yaml. To scroll down, you have a field called assets over here. Find assets. Yes, assets is here. And I'm going to uncomment this. This is where you should define, uh, you should mention all, all your images. First thing, let's uh, define all profile pics. Inside this profile pics folder, you have different uh, images. I'm going to uh, mention everything. Just copying this and changing the names. Make sure that you're giving the exact name uh, of your image file. I'm just looking at the side pane and entering this uh, as file names. We have some more. Also make sure that the extension is also right. All these are JPG. Uh, after this, we have some PNG files. So I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images in profile pics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. We're done with the profile pics right now. And we have some images directly inside the images folder. Let's add that too. This one is add.png. Then we have a post. That is JPG. This is where you, we usually make mistake. Like if the extension is wrong, uh, it will give you an error. Then we have comment. Then we have home. Then you have IG logo. It's gonna be logo. And you have the love icon or the like icon, whatever. Then you have another post. Then you have the reels icon. Save, search, share. Then you have the verified blue blue tick icon. I guess we have added everything. Let's save this. If you save this, if you notice here, it will automatically run the Flutter pub get uh, command for you. So if any of these images are not available, you will notice that there will be a yellow line below any of these images. If you get a, a, an yellow line below any of these uh, lines, it means that it cannot find that image. So check that whether spelling is correct or the extension is correct check that if everything is right inside this we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve images let's see whether we have 12 here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yes okay so we have all added all the images to pubspec.yml now let's come back to our app bar let's give the title as an image going to use image.asset and you're going to use image slash ig underscore logo dot png i'm going to give the height as 32. So how did i come with this 32 it's basically trial and error only because i have tried this before and i came up with what uh, looks okay for me this is basically trial and error only uh, after you do a lot of projects you will be familiar with the size and everything and this will be a lot more quick process for you let's now try this yes we have this thing right. The logo is correct. Next thing is we should have white color here also. For this, this is called a status bar. So how do you set the color for status bar? This is going to be useful when you actually build a, a actually building a project also. <clears throat> so for that, there is something called system overlay style. For that, I'm going to set that system UI overlay style and status bar color as colors dot white it's now it is white we have the white status bar and a white uh, app bar 
Now, if you notice here, we don't have a elevation for the app bar here. How to remove the elevation for app bar? So what is elevation basically? Elevation is basically a shadow which gives a priority like material design is like that. It works on shadows, elevations and everything. It, it gives you a feeling that the app bar is a little above the surface of the screen. We don't want it here. If how to remove that or how to change the elevation level for that, there is an attribute called elevation. I'm going to set it at zero. Now it should remove the elevation. Yes, it removed the elevation. Then if you notice, uh, I don't know whether it is visible through the screen, but if you notice here, this is color white, but this is a little uh, darker color. So we can uh, differentiate between the screen and the app bar. For that, how to set the background color? For that, go to scaffold and set background color as colors dot white. Now everything is white. Next thing, oh, sorry, I just turned it off. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is two action buttons that we have here. Yes, uh, two action buttons here. One thing is a create post. Next thing is a share icon. For that, what are we going to do right now is there is an attribute called actions inside the app bar. Just click on actions and all these actions are going to be widgets. So we are specifying the type as widget. Inside this action, what we are going to add is an image asset. So image dot set. I'm going to image slash add dot png. And I'm going to give the width as 24. Let's see how this is coming. Yeah, we have the plus icon here. Now, next thing is we have a share icon. For that, I'm going to give it as image slash share dot png and width as 24. Okay, now we have two icons here, but it is too close to each other. How to give uh, a space for this? We have seen a, uh, a widget called padding, right? So we are going to wrap this image inside a padding. For that, just go to uh, the image widget, click on control plus PD and wrap with widget or that is directly wrap with padding here. You see that it's wrapped with padding here and I'm going to give the padding value as let's say 12. I'm going to do the same with the last icon also wrap with padding. I'm going to give 12 for this. Let's save this. Yes. Right now we have two icons with a decent amount of padding. We have the logo here. We are done with the app bar part, I guess. Yes. So the app bar is done. Next thing is a row of stories. So how are we going to do this? If you notice here, we have a user avatar here and surrounding that there is a gradient border. Then you have the user ID below that. You can do it in two ways. Like you can directly write all these widgets inside your main file itself. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a new file, a new bit. I'm going to create a new widget for my use. So this is going to be a custom widget that can be used wherever in a project. I'm going to call this as let's say story avatar dot dot and let's say let's give the name as story avatar itself and it's going to extend a stateless widget so why is this a stateless widget because it's going to be static and we are going to override the build method here we want to have different images uh, while for different users, right? For that, how are we going to make how are we going to make the story of the display different images and different image names? We're going to have two uh, fields in here. One is going to be asset image. Let's give it name as give the name as img. And next thing is a string. Let's call it user id. Where are we going to get this? So whenever uh, class calls the story avatar class, it should pass this thing. How are we going to achieve this thing? We are going to write what, what is called as a constructor. So if you're not clear with uh, 
some of the oops concepts uh, if you want to get more insights on object oriented programming or anything check out videos on gdsc vit or any other uh, youtube channels that you like we have uh, something called as dev camp sessions where uh, we have explained about object oriented programming so that's in python but uh, the concepts are same everywhere uh, everywhere else so yeah feel free to check it out and this is how we have seen this before this is a named parameter and we are making it mandatory. We want the image, we want the user ID. Okay, now we have made the provision to accept the user image and the user ID. Now we have to return this thing. We can design our widget as the way that we like. What we need is a circle image surrounding with a circle gradient border. We're going to return a container Container is nothing but a wrapper. Like if you have done HTML or something, it's very similar to a div. You're returning a container and inside that, we're going to have a column. So why do we need a column here? We'll see. Because we need to arrange the image and this text one below the other. That's why we are going to use a column. Inside the column, the first widget is going to be a container itself. Why are we going to use a container? Because we are going to give the fill as a gradient. For that, how to give a gradient fill? Just give decoration. There's something called box decoration class. Inside that, you have a field called shape. We need a circle shape, right? So that's how you make a container circle. In shape, let's just give box shape dot circle as the shape then you have something called as gradient gradient is going to be a linear gradient and where is it going to start it's going to start i mean the begin where is it going to begin we are going to begin it from top uh, right to bottom left like this for that you can give it as begin from there is an alignment class alignment called alignment dot top right where is it going to end? It's going to end at alignment dot bottom left. It's going to be in this fashion. And then we have to specify the colors. Colors is going to be an array of colors. So this is how we are going to define custom colors using hex codes. We, uh, as I said before, we can use custom hex codes also. For that, let's call the color class and pass in the hex value. So before the hex value, just add zero x, then you can pass in the colors. So these are the colors that are used in Instagram's uh, gradient. You can just search on the internet, uh, Instagram gradient colors and give the values. Second color is going to be, uh, okay, F5. Eight five two nine, and I'm just using three colors for now. E D A seven F E D A seven seven. Okay, we have three colors here. So if we are, I'm going to make this conch because this box decoration is a constant thing; it's not going to change. And now we have set a gradient for the container. Inside this container, we're going to have a child called circle avatar. Circle avatar is the widget that we use to have an image within a circle. But I'm not going to give this uh, directly, give the image directly inside the circle avatar. What we need is, if you notice here, we have a gradient fill here then we have a white space in between that's basically a padding then you have the image so to achieve this thing i'm doing a little work around here i'm going to give this circle of that a radius of 38 this is a random value that i got after some trial and error i'm going to give the background color as colors dot transparent and then as child of this I'm going to have another circle avatar 
of radius 34 or something. So let's say 36. And this is going to have a background color with colors dot white. This is going to be our padding kind of thing. Then we have another child inside this. It will be also be a circle over that. And inside that, we are going to give the background image as the image passed to this. So what is this IMG? This IMG is nothing but this asset image that is passed to this class. And we are going to give its radius as 32. Okay. I hope uh, you have been following till now. And next thing is the user ID. So we will be having a text here with uh, the user ID as the text. Let's define a user. Uh, let's define a style for this uh, text. For that, I'm going to give the style attribute. Then I'm going to pass that text style. Let's say the color is going to be black color. Text is going to be black in color. You have something called font weight. Font weight is nothing but how bold the font should be. It's going to be regular only. Then we have font size. Let's give it as 12. Let's, let's make this also constant. Okay, we have a text right now. Need some uh, some margin between the image and the text. For that, you can use either use a margin, you can wrap text in margin, or what we usually use is something called a size box. So size box is nothing, it is uh, not visible unless you give some child to it, but you can give a height to it. I'm giving a height of eight. I'm saving this. Let's come back to main dot dot. So after this app bar, we need a body. This is where we are going to uh, specify the body of the application. We will add the row of stories. So before that, what we need is something called a single child scroll view. What is a single child scroll view? It should have a single child and it is going to scroll. So our column is going to be a long one because there, are, there, are, there's, there will be a lot of posts. So, so you should be able to scroll down. So we are going to use a single child scroll view. And inside that, we are going to add the child as a column because everything is going to be arranged in a vertical fashion. And you have children field in here. Inside this, uh, the first child is going to be this thing, this row. That is also going to be a single child scroll view, but it is going to be in a horizontal fashion. So how are you going to specify that it's going to be in horizontal? There's something called scroll direction. Inside the scroll direction, give the value as axis dot horizontal. So it's going to scroll horizontally. And as a child, we are going to give a row. Row is the widget that we use to arrange items in a horizontal fashion. What we have here is story avatar. If you notice here, if you click on story avatar here, if you scroll up, it would automatically import the package story avatar for you from your project. Okay, you have to pass the asset image here. For that, I'm going to pass one profile pic. first thing would be your story so for your story your id won't be shown there so i'm just passing your story there okay so our uh, this avatar is visible here let me now copy this let's put a comma and then copy paste this this is as many times as you need. 
just changing it to different images. And I'm changing this uh, user IDs. You can choose whatever images that you like and whatever uh, user IDs that you would like to give. For now, I'm just adding uh, four or five uh, images. Okay, now let's try this. Yes. So everything is here. Let's now try to give a little padding for this. Otherwise, it would look a little clumsy. For that, what we are going to do is just go to this container, wrap inside your story avatar widget, wrap it with a padding, and I'm going to give the value as four. Okay, now you have a little padding between this. Now, if you see, you're able to scroll. If you have more images here, you will be able to scroll uh, to the last item so yeah we have made the story avatar section we are good to go i hope uh, all of you are following yes okay let's get to our presentation and see what's next next thing is so if you notice here, there is a small line over here. We'll put that after we have done with these things. Next thing is a post. For a post, you have a small avatar here. It is very similar to your uh, this thing, uh, your story avatar, but it's small. We will make that. Then you have a user ID, then a verified tick, then the more icon. For that, we need after this, uh, let's see this single child scroll view in the main dot dot. Okay. So this is the first child of the column. After that, we are going to start post section. Just writing down comments to differentiate. User details is going to be. What we have here is a row. Because this is going to be a row with user avatar and everything. For the user avatar thing, we are going to Make a copy of this story avatar. Make a new file called small avatar. Dot. And to paste this and change the name of this class. For to, the shortcut to change the name of the class, just go to this class name, press on F2, and I'm going to call it as small avatar. We don't need a user ID here. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this also. We don't need a column here because it's only the avatar. I'm going to remove this text, remove this size box also. Then I'm going to remove this column. So now this column is of no use. I'm going to remove that also. So that remove this widget, yes. And we want this a little smaller, right? For that, I'm going to just change the values of these avatars. Everything else is going to remain the same. You give us 18, 16, 14. Okay. And as the first child of this row, I'm going to give the small avatar. Should we pass the image asset. Asset image, yes. Images slash profile fix slash, let's say, okay. This is going to be a constant value. Let's see. Yeah, we have the small icon here. Next thing is the user ID. For that, we are going to give a text widget. It's going to be a constant text for now. If you're actually building this, it's never going to be constant because it is going to come from your API. And I'm going to give a style for this, text style. This is uh, same as what we did before going to give the font weight as 500 so 500 is a medium uh, font weight then we have the verified image here for that I'm going to use the image dot asset yes slash verify let's go icon 
verify.png. I'm going to give the width at 16 and height also at 16. Should be outside the text. Yep. Okay, now let's try running this. Let's see what is there. Okay, we have some error. Okay, so why is this error coming? This is because probably the it couldn't find the image that you uh, specified in any of the image assets. So if you notice here, instead of plus, I gave a comma here. Instead of dot, I gave a comma. So change that, Let's try running this. If you get an image error, probably you should have to restart instead of hot reload, you have to give hot restart. Yes. Now we have the avatar, the, uh, the user ID and the verified tick. Then what we have next is an icon of more. For that, we're going to use icons. So this icon is already available in here. It is called more underscore VERT or vertical. Save this. Okay, we have this here, but we want this to be on the right side, right? For, for that, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this uh, verified icon inside something called an expanded widget. What is an expanded widget? It is going to fill in entire width or the or maximum width possible. So give expanded here. This will go in here, but the verified icon also goes to the center. How are we going to align this to the left of this thing? There is something called an align widget. Inside this expander, wrap the image with a widget called align. And this align widget has an attribute called alignment. Inside this alignment, I'm going to use as alignment dot center left. Now try running this. Yes, this is what we expect. We need a little space between all these. So for that, before this text, I'm going to give a size box as we did to have a mar top margin, we gave height, right? So for a side margin, we are going to give a width, a 12. Then you have another thing after this text. Let's say you want a small space of four. Yes, it has some space in between right now. Yes. Also, we need a little padding in here from the sides. For that, I'm going to wrap the, this whole row inside a padding widget. Inside this padding, if you notice, we have been using edge inserts.all. So what does this all mean? It gives padding from all the sides, top, bottom, left, and right. Right now, what I'm going to use is something called edge inserts.symmetric. You can give horizontal and vertical, like horizontal would be symmetric and vertical would be symmetric. You can give only horizontal also. What I need here is only horizontal. So I'm going to give horizontal 12, okay? And now we have some padding in here. Let's get back to the slides and see what all is left. We have this thing ready right now. Next up is the post image. So this should be the easiest part. After this padding, we're going to add the post image. For that, we're going to use image.asset, image slash, give it the name of your post. Now try running this. Yes, we have the post image in here. Next thing is is buttons of like, comment, share, and save everything. For that, we need a row widget because that's going to be arranged in a horizontal fashion. First thing is going to be an image icon. We can directly use the image asset also. There, this is just to uh, introduce you to a new widget called image icon. So image icon is what we are going to use in the bottom nav bar also. So inside the image icon, it expects an image asset. We are going to pass the asset image. That's images slash. Okay, the first thing is this. Uh, like image. Uh, 
Okay. So first thing is the light image. Then I'm going to give the size as 24. So it's going to be a constant image. Yes. And yeah, after this, We have a comment, then you have the share icon, then you have the save icon. I'm not sure, so sure whether the file names are right. Let's check that. Okay, you have this image, comment, 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 comment. Yes, comment is there, share is there, save is there. Okay, save this. Okay, if you see all these icons are here, but it is not really good, uh, nicely arranged. For that, what we are going to do is, we need this save icon to be on the right side, right? So we are going to do the exact thing that we did with the verified icon. I'm going to wrap this image icon inside an expanded widget, and I'm going to wrap this widget with an align widget get this alignment i'm going to give this as alignment dot center left now it's on the right side for the entire row let's wrap this with a padding it's also going to be symmetric with horizontal 12 yes we have a padding here we need some space in between this also for that i'm going to add size boxes with some images with some width sorry yeah, width is going to be 16 yes okay so we have uh, some space in here so for this row, we need some uh, vertical padding as well. So for that, let's give some vertical padding. Or otherwise, what we can do is we can do edge insets.all and give 12 for everything. OK, now we, we have a decent amount of padding. And for this row, let's give something called cross axis alignment. We have seen this before. Cross ax axis for a row is nothing but the vertical axis. We're going to align it to the center because different icons are there. We are aligning it to the center of the cross axis. Yes, now we have this ready. Next thing is the text part. This is going to be a little tricky part. We are going to use something called as rich text to have different styles inside a single uh, text thing. OK, so after this padding, let's add a new thing. I'm going to add text, let's say some random amount of likes, something. And let's give it a style. Text style. I'm going to give a font weight of bold. OK. And then, yeah, let's see how this is going to come. This is going to be constant for now. OK, it comes in the middle. You want it aligned to the left part, right? So for that, I'm going to wrap this in an align widget. I'm going to give the alignment as alignment dot center left. You can wrap this with a padding also. Uh, symmetric vertical let's give eight and horizontal let's give 12 and make the entire padding thing constant and remove this constants from here yes okay we have the like count in here next up we have the caption for that after this padding we're going to use something called as a rich text 
we need an alignment uh, align and a padding widget for that also so i'm just copying this okay and inside this i'm going to remove this child this text child i'm going to remove this text i'm going to use something called okay i'm going to use something called as text span i think we have some error here okay you can't make this constant okay okay inside this text span what we are going to give is text is going to be okay before text span what we should give is some rich text inside this we are going to give text span we are going to define a common style for what all text inside here it is going to be of type text style and i'm going to pass the color as colors dot black and the font size to be let's say 14 yeah i think that's fine for now then we have something called as children here inside this we are going to define different text bands with different styles like the first thing would be a little bold if you have a hashtag it's going to be blue like that okay so for that there is inside this text span you have a field called children and it's going to be a type text span it'll be an array first thing is the text span itself and the text is going to be the id you can define specific style for this piece of text only so that's the uh, use of rich text inside this you are going to give the font weight as bold yeah and you have another text span i'm just trying to replicate whatever thing is written here we have some text for project head or something Project head. It, so if we don't apply any style here, it would automatically apply the common style that you write here. So the text spans inherits uh, inherit the style that you write in here. Okay. Next thing is a mention. For mention, uh, there is some ID. For that I'm just giving a line break. Okay, for this I'm going to give a style. Text style. I'm going to give the color as colors dot blue or something. Or if you want to give any other color, you can give that. Like uh, if you want the exact color, you can get the uh, color code and do it as we did in the gradient part. Then we have another text. I'm just giving some space here so that it's not cluttered. And this is going to be exactly the same style as this, so I'm just copying this. Instead of this colors blue, let's give the actual color. Zero, three, seven, six. Okay, I'm going to copy this and give another ID here. And then we have 
expand treats more for the style copy this and change the color it's going to be something of a gray style Okay, let's okay, we have some issues somewhere. Let's see what are the issues. Okay, so we didn't give text here. Okay, let's try running this. Yes, we have this ready. We need a little space in here. Okay, so we have, but this padding seems a little too much. So for that, let's give the vertical as two or something. Okay, looks better. Okay, so this was the one. Okay, we have this ready. Okay, so we are done with the first post. What we are going to do right now is we're going to copy this entire post part. Okay, let's copy up to this padding. We're going to have second post. Okay, just copy that. Let's save this. Run this. You have the exact same thing over here. I'm just going to make small changes in here like just get going to change the post and everything and inside this let's give some random value And this text span, this is going to be this ID. I'm going to remove all this and you another text span with text as Android 10. Let's give a color of colors dot blue. Let's see how is it coming. Okay. You have this in here. There are some more text just copying that. Something like this. We are going to add a little space between these two posts for that just go to this second post add a constant size box here with height let's say 16. okay now we're going to an important part of bottom navigation bar just scroll down go to the scaffold so it is an attribute of scaffold inside this scaffold just write bottom navigation bar i'm going to pass the bottom navigation bar item and inside this bottom navigation bar what we are going to do is we are going to set the background color as colors dot white then we are going to set the icons items items are going to be bottom navigation bar item 
it is expecting an icon for that we are going to pass image icon and we are going to pass the asset image major slash home dot png that's the first thing and it expects a label it is going to be home constant okay so yeah we have a home icon here Let's copy this and thing is so I guess then you have reels then you have search okay you go to this you have to set the color of the icons you set the selected item color as colors dot black and unselected item color also as colors dot black Let's see now. Okay, so we have all these icons here, but we don't need this label, right? So for that, what we're going to do is show selected labels false, show unselected labels false. If you see, it is the selected item will be shifted slightly. To avoid that, what we are going to do is that is something called type. And we are going to give it as bottom navigation bar type dot fixed. So now we have something similar. Let's see here. Okay, we have search, then we have reels. So we missed, yeah, the reels is there. Then you have the love icon. And you have your avatar. So for that, we are going to copy this and instead of this image we are going to pass your small avatar here or just you can pass a set image let's pass in a circle avatar with background image change this it's also labels also okay now we have to give the radius let's give the radius as let's say 40 okay so now you have all the icons ready the home icon search reels everything is ready cool so we are done with almost everything we can add the list divider right now. For that, I'm going to create a new file called list divider dot dart. It's going to be a simple class. I'm going to give list divider. It's going to be a stateless widget. Just override the build method. And what we are going to return here is container. with a margin let's say edge instance dot so we have seen all and symmetric there's something called only also where you can define only top or bottom or anything and let's say height this one and decoration is going to be a constant box decoration color Okay. inside the main dart just scroll up to this row of avatars that you have here just calling that list divider here let's, now let's see how is it coming yeah we have the divider here if you want a little ma margin or padding anywhere you can add it so yeah this is the one that we were looking for We have an app bar, we have a row of 
avatars. Then you have different posts up here with the user ID, the verified icon, the user image, then the action buttons. Then you have the uh, captions, the like counts, and everything is here. Then you have the bottom navbar with all those icons, home, search, reels, and everything. So this is how we make a UI clone. This is how I make a UI clone. OK, so yeah, if there might be a lot of uh, workarounds that are easier than this and quicker with a lot of less code, if you guys find out something like this, feel free to reach out to us and let us know how you are going to achieve this. We'll be really happy to know how we are going to do this. So yeah, I hope we are moving towards the end of today's session. Wait for like two minutes in case you guys have any queries or something. Stay tuned to our social media channels to stay updated about upcoming events and everything. Okay, so this is what we were looking for. This is what we built finally. So if you notice here, since this is an image icon, it already has a ripple effect and everything. So if this is already a stateful widget. If you want to make this filled and update this like count, we have done this in the previous session. If you're trying this out on your own, try to do this. Try to make this stateful widget, update the state variables of this, make this dynamic. If you click on this, make it a filled red button and update the like count and make us make this dynamic as uh, as far as you can. We'll be really happy to see that. Yeah, I hope we can wind up for today. Thank you everyone for joining for today's session. I hope you did some uh, UI stuff today. Great. Okay, guys. So thank you everyone for joining today's session. Let's see you in the next session. Cool. Bye-bye.